olive oil, quote, pure oil of pressed olives, Exodus 27, verse 20, was a vital commodity in the ancient world. In addition to the tabernacle light, the Israelites used it for warmth on cold desert nights, for lamp fuel, for healing ointment, for food preparation, and for anointing. Remember that the titles Messiah and Christ mean, quote, the anointed one. It is commonly held that this oil is a picture of the Holy Spirit, and there's good reason. Notice the ministries of the Spirit. He also provides warmth of fellowship in the unity of the Spirit, Ephesians 4.3. He provides light for daily guidance. He is another comforter, John 14.16, with healing for our souls. He also gives soul food to us who, quote, will guide you into all truth, John 16.13. And he is the anointing one, as scripture plainly says, quote, you have an anointing from the Holy One, 1 John 2.20. But the spirit pictured in the oil always points to Christ. It was in Gethsemane, meaning olive press, that Christ was crushed to give the spirit's ministry to us. Christ is the warmth of our fellowship, the light of our life, the balm for our souls, the food of God, and the one who, quote, will baptize you with the Holy Spirit, Matthew 3.11. Just as it was Jesus' joy to shine on his Father, saying that all he did were his Father's, so the Spirit delights to illuminate the Son. Quote, he will glorify me, for he will take of what is mine and declare it to you. John 16, 14. God says he has anointed our Jesus, quote, with the oil of gladness more than your companions, Hebrews 1, 9. Yet Jesus' anointing and ours are linked in Isaiah 61. Quote, the spirit of the Lord God is upon me because the Lord has anointed me to give them the oil of joy for mourning, the garment of praise for the spirit of heaviness, that he may be glorified, verses one to three. Christ's ministry shares with us the joy that comes in happy submission to the Holy Spirit in our lives. There are two places our light should shine. Quote, let your light so shine before men that they may see your good works and glorify your Father in heaven, Matthew 5, 16. But the light in the tabernacle was something else. Quote, he lit the lamps before the Lord, Exodus 40, verse 25. This speaks of our testimony before him. If our little lamp begins to smoke and sputter, we know it isn't the fault of the oil because it's, quote, pure oil, chapter 27, verse 20. Thankfully, a, quote, smoking flax he will not quench, Matthew 12, 20. But there is some trimming to be done. To aid in keeping the light shining brightly, the Lord instructed Moses to make preparations, quote, and its wick trimmers and their trays shall be made of pure gold. Exodus 25, 38. Using gold for these? But then the Lord considers, quote, the genuineness of your faith being much more precious than gold that perishes, 1 Peter 1, 7. It's worth the expense. Although no individual needs fear his light being extinguished by the Lord, there is a solemn warning regarding the responsibility of churches who claim the name of Christ. It is a night scene in Revelation 2 and 3. The lampstands are to be shining brightly, illuminating, quote, one like the Son of Man, who is walking in the midst of the seven lampstands, Revelation 1, 13. He says, quote, remember therefore from where you have fallen, repent and do the first works, or else I will come to you quickly and remove your lampstand from its place, unless you repent. Chapter two, verse five. And why? 
serious false doctrine? Not in this case. Gross moral sin? Not this time. He says they had left, not lost, their first love. If so, how can we see our lamps burn brightly again? Perhaps it will happen when we return to where we first loved and rediscover His love for us.